No. I was wondering when you would uh, grace my halls, my uh, little star. <laughs> um. Well, perhaps someday you'll understand that my little nickname for you. <laughs> for now, I bid you reveal you. Uh, you re reveal in your ignorance. Do you enjoy what it might mean, though? Precisely. Like, I would not darken the inquisitive glimmer in your eye with a star and straight answer. <laughs> Keep wondering, my little star, and share with me your every guess. I look forward to hearing every single one. You know, you worry you might distract me from my duties. <laughs> my dear, when the gods give me a star to sit by my side, I would only be a fool to look at the heavens. <laughs> of course. You wish to know why I have summoned you here. <clears throat> Indeed, there is uh, plenty you can help me with. Why, your uh, very exist existence is a blessing in itself. I'm certain her um, royal highness would be great, and would it be uh, a creative, of course. Nevertheless, I did not summon you here for any uh, your uh, surely tiresome tasks as a knight. Instead, I will ask you to assist me with my work. <laughs> here we have the um, tools of my trade, if you will, where you use your sword and shield, and I use these cards and relics. There are 12 cards, face down, of course. Along them, you see these, uh, these bottles. They each contain a divine relic. Now, I ask you kindly to set and ask when you need to use one of these bottles. No need to dwell on it too much, though. Just choose whichever you feel your heart is drawn to. Oh. You are torn. However so, my dear. I see. So your attention was first drawn by the starlight, but rather than by your choice. Instead guided you to choose another. That's hardly nonsensical at all. Oh, my little star, Blimey, now tell me, please, which did it bid you to choose? Oh, intriguing. Now tell me. Which of these pile of cards do you feel as you have a strong connection to? Again, like no need to dwell on the matter. Simply make your choice without fear or hesitation. That one. Amorelia. The goddess of love. Intriguing indeed. And which card do you feel though would be, um, you would loathe to select, my little star? <laughs> be not afraid. Look, I understand your concerns, but alas, we must face our fears. Rest assured that I will be by your side, and I will protect you. Well, as much as I, uh, as much as a, uh, diviner can protect an armed knight. That is. <laughs> now tell me, which card has caused you such distress, my dear? I see. Shirina. My goddess of temperance. Very well. Come set. I shall make us some tea and explain to you what you have just learned from, from me. <laughs> Although you must forgive me for my uh, deception. Even I admit I cannot foresee how tiresome this task could be for my little star. <laughs> like as you know, every night I prepare a report of the heavens for his majesty. Granted, he does not always need heed it, but it's nevertheless my duty. Tonight, however, was exceptional. The stars would not yield to me. I saw nothing. Instead, they bade me to seek you out. For they would only speak only to you. Now why? I can't say. But such is the truth, my little star. Not the bottle of starlight excellence. Guess of it, uh, its contents. <laughs> By the way, we, why it would appeal to you at first. First glance is no surprise, but it is intriguing that it would guide you. The bottle you did choose before, Bark, <laughs> belonged to uh, Anima, the Anima tree, the sacred tree of life. 
that your heart would be drawn to is suggesting the matters are taking root and the roots are strong. It's unlikely that the events of this night shall be without consequence. <laughs> you fear for me that the weight of my du my duty. Like somebody must bear the burden, my little star. Now, as for your cards, our heavens are divided into twelve gates, each gate corresponding to its deity. Each night, one gate is illuminated, the other is enshrouded. When a gate is illuminated, it means that its deity is offering us their blessing. When it's enshrouded, it means that the deity is turned away from us for the evening. The first card, the one you felt drawn to, corresponds to the Gate of Love, the Goddess Amrelia. It's a difficult one, but she is true. Whatever shall unfold tonight, it will be done for love. However misguided it may be. The second card corresponds to the Gate of Temperance. It's shrouded in dark. They are those whose actions will be unbridled. Like unfitted beasts. Not you, though, my little star, but others. You must tread carefully, though, lest you be swept under their tent. <laughs> enough. Okay. You have already done enough for me. <laughs> I would not trouble you further with the task of understanding the gods' fickle winds. <laughs> you feeling any better? <laughs> I'm glad to hear, my dear. Why? Why will you not be affected by the Enchanted Gate? <laughs> Alas, um, you ask me another question. Then you must know the answer already. Now, <laughs> my little star, if I gave you all the answers at once, what excuses would I have to see you again? <laughs> Tell me, my dear, how goes your affairs? I admit I have missed your company dearly since we last met. At the Stellar Festival, if I recall correctly, you were as radiant as the stars in the heavens that night. But I do not flatter you at all. I do recall you were pleased to see the lanterns, were you not? And your smile was enough to illuminate every gate in the heavens at once. Well, please do tell me about your affairs. I see. His <laughs> majesty changed. And her highness fears for her brother. I've heard the whispers among the knights, of course. But I must ask you, my dear, do not busy yourself or over much with royal affairs. You are something far greater than a knight. You're a star, brilliant, bright. You must not allow the king's violent nature to dull your shine, my dear. <laughs> you wish to know the origins of the stellar festival. And you <laughs> won't take a riddle for an answer. Very well. My dear, it is a long tale. Would you like to listen to it, or would you prefer an abridged explanation? <laughs> of course, how foolish would you think of you would settle for anything less but the story in its entirety? <laughs> well... Once upon a time, two lovers met beneath the full moon. The heavens gave her radiant and bright. And so the man asked for his beloved hand in marriage. <sighs> they, they remained together for eternity in blessed union. The woman was gentle of heart, loved him true. But she feared that his words may be sweeter than love. Thus, she made him a request. She would marry him and love him for all of eternity, but before the sixth year of their marriage, he must give her a star from the heavens. If he did not, she would surely die of a heartbreak. <laughs> ah, you think the lady is demanding, my dear. Perhaps, but lovers have done so much more for one another. Don't, 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 no, don't interrupt me. Please, the goddess of patience would disapprove of your interruptions, you know. <laughs> the young man loved his bride dearly, and so he resolved to make her wish come true. 
Each night, he would stand beneath the skies and watch the stars. He would pray to the gods and send him a, send him a star from the heavens, that he may keep his word. But they paid him no heed. He attempts to climb, to fly, to snatch a star from the skies, that his love would know how much he loved her, true. But each night, he would return empty-handed to resolve to resume his search the following night. Until the sixth year came, the young man's beloved grew ill with heartbreak. So sweet had been his words, and yet their home was darker than the deepest shroud. For he had not kept his word to her, as she lay in his arms, frail and frightened. The young man wept. He asked her, how could she still doubt his love, when he had spent each and every night in pursuit of one wish? But she could no longer speak. Her body had grown weary with worry for him and would not return home until dawn. And her heart had grown weary with hurt at his abandonment of her each evening. As her eyes fell closed, the young man cried to the heavens once more. He cursed the stars and the gates illuminated. As he cursed the gods and had kept him from lying at his beloved side each night to watch the moon's light on her beautiful face. In that moment, the goddess of love descended from the heaven and spoke to the young man. My lover, she said, had never once sought the stars that decorated the skies. She had already found the stars in thine eyes. And she wished for only a child to bear the same sparkle in her eyes. In thy pursuit of radiant flame, thou hast abandoned thy lover in anguish of solitude, warmed only by a flickering ember. The young man wept and wept. He swore he had not known that she should have said that his love had been true. But the goddess denied him his every claim. His force so shallow of his love that he had failed to truly know his lover. Only when she had laid lifeless in his arms did he come to know how dearly he loved her. But the goddess of mercy is illuminated in her gate, in the gate of night. So she rewarded him for his repentance, for his lover, for her patience. From the stars in the heavens, she created for them a child to call their own, to forever bear the blessing of the gods. Thus, there were children of starlight brought to the world, bearing their first father's sparkling eyes and their mother's gentle heart. They would walk in the land of love and return to the heavens in love. Each year we celebrate that miracle at the Stellar Festival. We offer prayers to gods and pray that the children of the stars will forever walk among us. Of course, now it is considered a myth, but the choice to believe is, is your own, my little star. Uh, you've fallen asleep. <laughs> of course, you must be wary. Perhaps I ought to cover you. What to do, what to do. This blanket should do nicely. There you are. <laughs> Sleep, my little star. Swim through the sky and dance among your sisters and brethren. Seek the answers that lie in the moon's darkness. And shine your radiant light upon them. Until your curiosity is sated. Sleep and all <laughs> shall be well when you awaken. Until then, I will keep my vigil here by your side. Good night, my love. Hey guys, it's super weird. If you guys did do this audio limit anyway, you think it's fine. Hope you guys have a great night tonight. And I hope you guys have a great day tomorrow. And um, for those of you here, and I've been on my channel for a good bit, would you guys like if I did like full on like chapter book readings? <laughs> um, if you guys are interested in that at all, um, let me know. And I might get onto it. But as obviously, I did, if you guys did enjoy, enjoy. Oh my goodness, speak! Sorry, I'm a little, uh, a little litter right now. <laughs> you guys have a good night, and I hope you guys have a great day tomorrow. As always, bye-bye.